Hey, Zach here from digitalconstructive.com, and in this video, we're going to be talking about the low voltage license, the C7 low voltage contractor license, also known as just the C7 license. So as defined by the CSLB, a communications and low voltage contractor installs, services, and maintains all types of communication and low voltage systems where, which are energy limited and do not exceed 91 volts. These systems include, but are not limited to telephone systems, sound systems, cable television systems, closed circuit video systems, satellite dish antennas, instrumentation and temperature controls, and low voltage landscape lighting. Low voltage fire alarm systems are specifically not included in this section. And that's the definition straight from the Contractor Stay License Board website. So the C7 license is required for anybody that's looking to charge over $500 for any type of low voltage elect electrical services. So if your project is over $500 in labor or materials, you're going to have to have a C7 license. So how long does it take to get the C7 license? You're looking at about 90 days. You know, there's situations where it'll take longer than 90 days. There's situations where it'll take less than 90 days. But on average, that's about, about how long it's taking. You know, some of the factors that'll make it take a lot longer are the time of year. For example, if you submit your application around the holidays, chances are applications will get backed up and it'll take a little bit longer. You know, your criminal history is a factor. And then also whether or not your application gets put up for further review for experience. Those are all factors that can make it take a little bit longer than that. But generally you're looking at about a six to eight week application processing time. And then usually another three to four weeks after that before you go and, and take your exam. So the basic requirements are that you have to be at least 18 years of age. You've got to have a valid driver's license or USA ID. You've got to have a social security or ITIN number. And you can't currently be on probation or parole. Now the experience requirements that you have to have for the low voltage license are that you have to have at least four years full-time journey level experience and it has to be within the last 10 years. So a journey level, you know, low voltage electrician, for example, would be able to pretty much do any duty associated with, you know, low voltage work, you know, unsupervised. That's the definition of a, a journeyman. So you're going to have to also have somebody who can sign off on your experience. You'll need to be able to also document your experience if the state board asks you to prove your experience. So who can sign off for you? You can have a general contractor sign off. You could have a C7 license holder. You could have a foreman or supervisor. You could have a fellow journeyman. Or you could have a business associate. So any one of these people can sign off and verify your experience. So filling out the contractor license application. So the person that you choose to sign off for you is basically going to have to provide a brief description of your skill set on the application. It's called the work certification. Now, how this description is written is critical to the CSLB. For example, if your contractor writes, John is a nice guy and he's been installing audio systems for a long time, that just won't work. It's not descriptive enough. The CSLB is going to want to see something like John has installed and inspected and maintained closed circuit systems, alarm systems, and sound systems, as well as rewired and installed master antenna systems. For example, don't use that word for it, but that's more or less the gist of how they want your experience explained. So keep that in mind when you're filling out the application. Now, proving your experience. Now, if you're one of the applicants that the state board asks you know, to submit further documentation, you have a few different ways that you can do this. You can send tax returns. You can send check stubs. You can send invoices, receipts, contracts. These are all different ways that you can document the experience that you have. Now, criminal history. Having a criminal record does not disqualify you from getting a C7 license. You know, you're going to have to do fingerprinting. So, you know, when you're filling out the application, they're going to ask you, have you ever had a uh, felony or misdemeanor. You're going to check yes if you have had one. If not, don't worry about it. But if you have, be honest because when you do the fingerprinting, if you check no, it's going to come up and it could cause problems for you in the application process. You know, whether it's been expunged, even if it was years ago, check yes. Be 100% honest on the application. 
Generally, the state board is looking for fraud, forgery, embezzlement, financial white collar crimes, things associated with stealing money. You know, those are red flags for the CSLB. But generally, if your charges don't fall under that and it was taken care of, you know, still be honest on the application, but be prepared to submit any court documents that the state asks for. Now, what's on the exam? There's two parts. There's going to be 115 questions on law, and that's contractor law. This is the same law test that every contractor has to take. And then there's going to be 100 questions specific to load voltage. You'll have three hours to complete each portion. It's a multiple choice test. It's going to be done on site on a computer. And now the C7 license exam is going to be 19% job planning and design. It's going to be 18% material selection and estimation. It's going to be 11% wire and cable installation and termination. It's going to be 15% systems configuration and installation. It's going to be 8% system troubleshooting, repair, and replacement. And it's going to be 17% safety. If you want to know more about what's going to be on the C7 license and the law and business license, I would suggest you click the link. Um, check out digitalconstructive.com. We've got an entire um, post specifically on the C7 license where we go a little bit more in depth into what's going to be on the low voltage license exam. So the costs. You know, when you submit an application, you're going to have to pay a state application fee. This is how going to have to be paid in a check or money order form. After you pass the exam, you're going to pay a license activation fee. And this is going to be paid every two years. You're going to have to cover the cost of fingerprinting. And you're going to have to pay what's called a contractor bond fee. So you, the state board is going to want you to have a contractor bond number ready for them before they issue you your license. Now, how much you pay for your contractor bond depends on where you go to, to get your bond. But it is something that you will need to pay for. So after you pass the C7 license exam, you'll know immediately. You'll get your results right there on the spot. It's a computerized exam, so you'll know whether you pass or fail right there. You can retake the exam. Um, right now, it's taking about 60 bucks to, to retake it. Usually, you can take it within three weeks. And you have to pay your license activation and provide your contractor bond number. And once you do that, you usually get your contractor license card, the physical card, in the mail within about, I'd say, you know, two to three weeks. So in conclusion, getting the C7 license, it's a very smooth process, assuming you have the correct information and you have everything organized. You know, you fill out your application correctly, and of course you pass the exam your first try. You know, if you follow all these steps laid out in this video, it should be a very smooth process for you. So I just want to thank you for watching. Again, my name is Zach from digitalconstructive.com. You know, click the like button, subscribe. We're always dropping new videos. We've got videos on every single license. If there's something you want to see us make a video on, drop it in the comments and we'll do our best to make that happen for you. But thanks again for watching and thanks for checking out the video from digitalconstructive.com.